From exclusive items to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between KFC in China and the US. This is Food Wars. Here in China, we can get KFC in three portion sizes. One piece, two pieces, and six pieces. In the US, KFC chicken comes in seven portion sizes. These first four are one piece a la carte, two piece with a combo, that's a side, a biscuit, and a drink, three piece also with a combo, and the four piece also with the combo. And of course we have buckets. We have three main core buckets. The snack bucket, which contains five pieces of chicken and six wings. The family bucket, which gets you an extra corn on the cob, some mashed potato and three drinks, and the super family bucket where you get dessert and mashed potato, more of both on top of that as well. And then we have buckets where you can get an eight piece, a 12 piece, or the 16 piece. Now, if we're going strictly on just chicken and not wings, the US's largest is 166 point, repeating 6% bigger than China's largest chicken portion size. Next, we have fries. Now here in China, we get them in three sizes, small, medium, and large. We got two fry sizes in the US, the individual and the large. Let's weigh the large fries in both countries. <laughs> I never grow tired of that. Here in China, our drinks come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. American drinks come in the following sizes, regular, 20 ounces, and large 30 ounces. But that's not all. You can also get a half gallon container, Gouge, the Jesus piece of any beverage of your choosing. Damn. Hope you're sharing that, Joe. Here's everything you'll find in a KFC in China that you won't find in the US. And we have a lot to get through. Here's everything you'll find at a KFC in the US you won't find in China. One exclusive that we have here in China that you cannot find in the US are wings. That's right. It's tough times for the US economy in just about every sector. Earlier this year, KFC laid off several favorite menu items, including wings, Nashville hot sauce to anything, strawberry lemonade, chocolate chip cookies, and pretty much popcorn chicken. They still exist in the famous bowls, but not on their own. Ah, we still got them here. And they're available in two styles, the crispy spicy wings and the New Orleans grilled wings. They might be wondering, what are New Orleans wings? Uh, apparently, KFC might have invented the flavor. And it's kind of like how General So's chicken is not actually from China. New Orleans chicken is kind of just a misnomer. It's a honey baked spicy wing with a, I think a Cajun mix. U.S. chicken styles. One chicken style you can get here in the U.S. you can't get in China is this, the extra crispy. It's exactly what it sounds. They fry it like twice or with more breading. I don't know, but it gives that extra crispy crunch. Volume up. In some parts of the country, you can get Kentucky grilled, grilled chicken, not fried. I mean, fried's in the title, so I don't know what you're doing getting grilled chicken at KFC. And for sandwiches, we have a spicy option. I just wanted to talk a little bit about our chicken recipes here. So this is the original recipe, but we also have an additional recipe called the golden crispy chicken. Now you can tell that there's quite a bit of a difference. It is significantly more golden in that I guess it's lighter yellow colored than the original, but there's also a very healthy sprinkling of chili powder on top. And the batter is a lot harder and crunchier. I guess it's probably more of a localized version of the chicken. That looks delicious. That's like extra crispy and spicy. Yeah, I definitely want to try that. Here we have our exclusive burgers and roll. We'll get to that later. First off, I just want to draw your attention to the rattan pepper flavor spa chicken burger. I had a really tough time trying to figure out what spa meant. And I found actually on one advertising poster in fine print 
that SPA was not an acronym. It just meant that the chicken is juicy and tender because this is made of chicken breast instead of chicken thigh, which you'll remember from another episode is the norm here in China because Chinese people think that chicken thigh is juicy and tender, whereas breast is really dry and it's basically chalky. So I guess the SPA is an attempt to get rid of that stigma by saying, oh, look, it's so soft and tender, like the chickens just come out of a massage or a spa treatment. If you haven't had hot pot or had Sichuan flavors before, this might be a really big turnoff because the taste of the rattan pepper is so strong. The chicken is all right, you know, it's tender. I can't say it's just come out of a spa. The spicy chicken sandwich looks basically the same. Well, for one, it's not spicy. And second, it's actually not as tasty as the uh, the spa chicken. I do actually not. You know what? I take it all back. I do actually feel that the the spa chicken is a little bit more tender. This one does feel drier. The crispy chicken sandwich. It's pretty much the same as everything else. I think they're really just adding different condiments. But the gist of it is always lettuce, the mayo, and chicken. That's it. And the bun, of course. And the new orleans chicken burger of course they're going to put this in a burger as well if they've gone and invented an entire flavor category that's actually not bad and we have one more chicken option the old beijing chicken roll or as listed on their website the dragon twister so they called it old beijing style and i now understand that old beijing means that you're going to chuck some cucumber in there there's probably leek in there as well, there's gonna be tianmian sauce. Let's give the dragon a taste. It just tastes sweet. There is a crunch from the cucumbers, but the cucumbers kind of gone a bit, it's kind of gone a bit sad as well. Now we've got the beef burger options. This is the classic American style beef burger. Imagine this being like the introductory course to American flavors for someone who's never left China. They're going to be sorely disappointed. Oh. You can also get double beef burgers at KFC in your classic American style. Oh, no thank you. Or the smoked pepper flavor. If you want a burger, go to McDonald's, go to Burger King. There's also a fish burger, the deep sea cod burger, which you can get as a double as well. I do have my hopes up for this one. Not very high, mind you, but I do have some hope for this one. This is the Bacon Wagyu Beef Burger. It's a premium burger, as you can tell, because it comes in its own box, which prevents it from becoming squished into sandwiches like these guys. No, no, no. I don't care if it really is Wagyu or not. In fact, it actually tastes a little bit like the consistency of Spam. You can get that as a double or a triple, but I <laughs> just skip it in my opinion. We have one exclusive sandwich to the US. It's this, the Chicken Little, which I guess is a bite-sized chicken sandwich with a little tender in here. Also, um, hey KFC, if I had one note, maybe relax on the mayo on this. Are you kidding me? Look at this. The sauce, whatever this is, like, bro, it is dripping. Nah, pickles, not a fan. Why this over the chicken sandwich? I have no idea. I mean, unless you have like a, a kid or a picky eater, skip these. We've also got other chicken options, beginning with our Hong Kong style crispy big chicken thigh. If you've watched our other episodes, you'll know that Hong Kong style usually is used to denote a sort of a sweet honey roasted flavor profile. Would have been oven baked. Look at this glaze, that's beautiful. Mmm, it's sweet without being cloying. It's savory, it's incredibly meaty. There's also the secret recipe whole chicken. Look at that, an entire chicken. See, it's, it's about the size of my face and I've got a pretty long face. You've done well, you've done well, Colonel. Mm, I forgive you for the burgers. Heck yeah, dude, I totally want one of those, man. Just bite right into that big leg like I'm at medieval times. This here is the hot and spicy chicken with bone and apparently it's scapular meat so your collarbone i've never had collarbone chicken meat so this is definitely a first for me it tastes a little bit like 
a chicken nugget, but with a bone inside. And we've also got popcorn chicken and nuggets. You might be wondering what these are. KFC is trying to squeeze in on the pizza business. This is KFC's K pizza. This is a chicken and mushroom K pizza. Look at that, ultra thin crust. That's actually pretty good. I think I actually like this more than Domino's pizzas. And this one is very special. This is the K pizza da pan ji flavor. So da pan ji means big plate of chicken. It's a Xinjiang dish, which is usually a chicken stew comes on a giant dish with potatoes and bell peppers. And you also get some hand pulled noodles thrown in. In fact, the origin story of the big plate of chicken supposedly was either invented by a Sichuanese or a Hunanese immigrant who was serving these dishes up to truckers. And uh, they're very hearty, they're super tasty. You always eat them in a group, but I'm just gonna pick out and eat one by myself on a pizza. Mm. KFC, this is legit good. KFC has recently added nuggets back onto the menu, so they're technically not exclusive anymore, but I'll show them off here. You can get them in eight and 12 pieces, Here's the nugget eight pieces. Get in there, Yuli. Nugget vision. Now, remember before when I said they didn't have popcorn chicken anymore? I mean, this is pretty, right? It's a little bit bigger than popcorn chicken. When I said nuggets, you were probably thinking what I was thinking, like McNuggets, right? Like nuggets. So this being a nugget is very strange. Really good though. We also have chicken tenders. Uh, they come in orders of eight, 12, and 16. The crispiness on this, I have to. Mm. Now to complement your chicken, we have a plethora of sauces and condiments to offer, namely sweet vinegar and sweet chili, which we couldn't find today, and the Sichuan pepper spicy chili powder. You can't eat these dry. We have a bunch of exclusive sauces. And you know what that means. Sauce talk. Sauce talk. Start it off, the Buffalo Ranch. Thank you, Nuggets. Let's go. Yeah, the KFC sauce, really good. Barbecue sauce, honey barbecue, excuse me. Mm. Classic ranch. I don't know what the ranch situation out there in China is, but here, we're, we're doing all right with ranch. The ranch situation in America, solid. We also have a honey mustard sauce, a honey sauce, and a hot sauce. All three today, they did not have. Here in China, KFC has something called the DIY Kitchen, and they also have stuff from third-party vendors. Without further ado, let's dig in. First off, we have the chicken nuggets and the hot and spicy chicken with bone. If I was hungry and I wanted KFC, I'm gonna order KFC. I'm not gonna go and cook it myself. Isn't that the whole point of takeout of fast food? It's cooked for you. If you're so inclined, you can also make KFC's famous egg tarts at home. KFC is also offering secret recipe chicken fillets from a third party vendor, the whole cut sirloin steak, also from a third party. KFC also selling you pasta now. They come in mushroom and black pepper, carbonara and spag bowl. I actually, oh, this is the spag bowl. <laughs> You've got your bolognese. You got various condiments. Yeah, no to KFC pasta. No to KFC pasta, no to their burgers. Chicken is your lane, stay in that lane. They've also got rice. They come in four flavors. The original flavor chicken, Japanese style fried rice. What's Japanese about it? I can't tell. And this one is the baked rice. This one is the French style roast chicken cheese baked rice and probably the most understandable of the offerings in the DIY kitchen, the ice cream. So KFC have partnered up with Oatly. As you can tell, Oatly is just everywhere in China. It's so big. KFC also has this. It's called the modern ice cream. Although here in China, we call it the Ma Dear. And it's got a really interesting history. This originates from a city in Northeast China called Harbin where they hold the Ice and Snow Festival, if, if you know about that. And basically modern Harbin was more or less built by the Russians. 
Um, the modern gets its name from a hotel that was built by a Russian, which also had a bakery and sold yogurt and ice cream. So this has become an institution, especially if you go to Harbin in the winter for the Snow and Ice Festival, when it's like minus 20, people are still queuing up on the street to get yourself one of these popsicles. It's been a, it's been a while. Let's see if the ice cream is still good to eat. <laughs> it does feel a little bit soft. Oh, it's like Frosty the Snowman once, uh, once summer's set in. You can just have a peek. <laughs> I'll be able to drink it soon. Mm, salvageable. What still is going strong in the menu is the pot pie. Man, this thing is hot. Aye. I don't want to disrespect any of the pot pie heads watching but I've never seen anyone order this. I've never seen anyone eat this. This thing is gigantic. You can't get this as a side. So someone in this country, assuming lots of people, are walking into Kentucky fried chicken and getting a pot pie. I don't know why you're doing this. Pot pie is perfectly fine. I feel like this could totally go on the menu. If you wanna fight me in the comments, go for it. But I've never met a person who gets this and eats it. And uh, this is kind of my job. We'll do a taste test later. As for now, moving on to the famous bowl. I don't think this exists outside of America, so let me go ahead and explain it. It basically is every side plus popcorn chicken, or in this case, nuggets, in one thing. Mashed potatoes, gravy, cheese, corn, and yeah, bits of chicken. Look, it's not that I don't like all these things, but together in one dish is kind of, mm. So what you're really doing is getting a side of mashed potatoes and gravy and sprinkling some cheese, corn, and chicken on it. I don't know if people were complaining on the internet, the famous bowl is so good, now they have the mac and cheese bowl, which is mac and cheese with chicken on it. And these are the nuggets. Remember I said before the popcorn chicken is still in this? I mean, isn't this popcorn chicken? Are these too big to be popcorn chickens? Is this nuggets that have replaced the popcorn chicken? I want answers. The nuggets are fine, and the mac and cheese is too, but together, they don't add anything. The only thing it's doing is being like, why get it in two containers, just get it in one? Speaking of mac and cheese, exclusive sides in the US, you, you can get your mac and cheese without chunks of chicken in it, just regular mac and cheese. Uh, our biscuits. Oh, so dry. Cold flaw. China. You don't want this. I, I mean, how do, how do you even explain coleslaw? Shredded lettuce. Shredded cabbage, excuse me, all right. I don't even know what it is. With what, mayo and carrots and corn. Like McDonald's, KFC also has a late night street food menu. But unlike McDonald's, which only has one item, the chicken carcass, KFC has four and two different types of chicken carcass. I feel like the KFC version is maybe a bit bonier. So this is probably the Citron version then. Let's take one of these fellas out. I think preferable to the original. This is pretty interesting. This actually looks like original recipe chicken. This, in fact, is called the Ao Ao Big Chicken Carcass. Ao Ao is, uh, <laughs> is onomatopoeic and it's from the northeastern region of China. Basically, it's slang for howling. You know, that is gigantic and you're just, you're dying to eat it. So Joe, if you come to China and you want to order this, you know what you got to do. You just go up to the counter and be like, I want the oh, chicken. Got it. And then they'll know exactly what you want. You can also get fried chicken feet, but we've done one better and gotten the fried chicken feet and fragrant bones box. This is the chicken feet, obviously. There's also chicken neck. There's chicken wing tip, scapula meat. So all of the fiddly parts of the chicken in one convenient box for you to nibble on. These are all of our exclusive breakfast options. Okay, so first off, I just want to draw your attention to this. KFC has Xiao Long Bao. This is incredible because this is a super popular breakfast item. If you wake up early, you'll see lots of sellers sort of with bamboo steamers about as tall as you are, filled with these sorts of little bao. The KFC Xiaolong Bao. Oh, that's even better than my neighborhood breakfast place. Color me impressed. I'm very, very, very smitten with this. Plus they also provided a pack of vinegar 
because you can't eat bao without vinegar. Next, we have the congees. In terms of flavors, we've got the century egg and pork, a staple congee. This would be sour pickle and chicken. And over here, we've got the chicken and egg. This is the century egg and pork. And he goes, I don't actually like century egg. It's stanky, but not as stanky as the like authentic century egg. And the you tiao, the crispy Chinese kruller or dough stick. I mean, there are so many different names for this thing, but this is the heart of every Chinese breakfast. This goes well with soy milk. You can dip it in soy milk, you can dip it in congee. It's like a churro, but not sweet. A bit chewy. These things are always best right out the, um, the wok. Continuing on with our Chinese breakfast. This is, this is just super cute. This is something that's called a tea egg. You get these in one or four. And if you're using a tea egg, you gotta have some yu tiao. And if you're having yu tiao, you gotta have some congee. Mm-hmm. That's the trifecta. It's the holy trinity of Chinese breakfast. We have the crispy chicken spring rolls, although they've lost a bit of spring. What is... I feel like one of those sausage finger people from everything, everywhere, all at once. Like... <laughs> I didn't realize we were in the uh, floppy, crispy spring roll universe. There's also a chicken chop and egg. Chinese style roll. Although really this is this is more of a wrap. And what do we have in here? We've got chicken breast that looks like cucumber leek. This is what's known as a bao cui, which literally translates to thin and crispy. And it's meant to be thin and crispy, but it's more like thin and flaccid right now. I think this is tianmian sauce, which is um uh, a sweet bean paste. I have to say this. The Chinese breakfast at KFC is next level. I want all of that. Are you kidding me? All of that looks incredible. Next, let's talk about the non-Chinese breakfast. So we've got our panini offering right here. We're gonna begin with the cheese and sausage panini, just your regular, I think it's actually ciabatta bread. Now we've got the cheese, sausage and egg, the cheese and chicken panini, the cheese and thick omelette panini. Now, this is interesting because this is a rolled omelette. I think in Japan, they would call it a tamagoyaki. Here, we've got the chicken chop thick rolled omelette, double panini. These three are special. We've got them just for you. They're new offerings on the KFC menu. In fact, KFC has been really good at updating this menu. Pretty much every month, they're gonna have new stuff. This is the souffle lineup, the cheese and egg souffle panini. It's basically the same eggy thing, but it looks like it's worked out more in the gym. It's got a better pump. Next, we've got the chicken chop and egg souffle panini. I just want to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Is it not the same thing? And I saved the fanciest of them all for last. This is the beef filet egg souffle oh look at that they even made it rhyme okay it comes in its very own special box okay so we've got the the fluffy souffle and then there's mashed potato <laughs> in my panini and the beef filet now we have le french again le Francaise. That was really bad. I, I'm, I'm pretty bad at the French accent, sorry. We have the smoked chicken French style croissant bread. It's basically a croissant witch. It's a square croissant with sesame seeds and le bacon and egg French style croissant bread. The, the bacon and egg French style croissant bread if my accent was terrible. Not as impressed with the paninis. Uh, and we kind of got those here. And of course, if you can't get enough of the Western style breakfast, you can also get single add-on items such as an egg, sunny side up. Uh, you can also get a nice juicy sausage, hash browns, always a must. This is the egg and vegetable soup. Here we've got the Hong Kong style 
big crispy chicken thigh rice. This section beneath it is just literally <laughs> filled with rice. And this is the spicy meat sauce grilled chicken rice. Here are two additional non-chicken sides that we have. Corn and wavy fries. Get a ch I get a whole chocolate cake to KFC in the US. I don't know why they don't sell it by slices. I guess it's for the whole family or whatever. What can I say about chocolate cake? It's chocolate's got frosting on it. It's very good. I'm not gonna bite into it. We're gonna donate it, so I don't wanna screw it up. Trust me, it's good. These are our exclusive desserts. Let's begin with KFC's bestseller, the Portuguese style egg tart, or just the egg tart for sure. And if you can't eat two whole egg tarts, then you can go for the baby egg tarts. Oh, look how cute they are. They're tiny. KFC offers a Basque cheesecake. And this is the red bean pie. That's delicious. KFC offers an original ice cream cone, but because we got it delivered, that's the cone. <laughs> And this is the ice cream. <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay, I guess that's how I'm supposed to take it out. I'm just gonna drink the ice cream. Here we go. This is a first. Oh, 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 okay, okay. All right, we're gonna put it back. Sundays, we've got four of them. Strawberry, brown sugar, and bubble sauce. I, I assume bubble as in bubble tea. This here is the mango grapefruit sundae. New on the menu, the North American blueberry sauce. Here we've also got super soft mochi sundaes. This is the strawberry flavor. And this is the one that I guess is basically the milk tea version, but with mochi balls on top. Following on in the footsteps of the mochi sundae, there's also super soft KFC mochi ice cream which comes in four flavors. This one is strawberry. Ah, no, this one's strawberry Oreo. You can also get regular strawberry, Oreo, and taro flavor. That's actually pretty tasty. Drinks. We got a bunch of them here in the US. Starting down here, something that is new to America, a lemon lime beverage called Starry. Uh, Sierra Mist is out, Starry's in, and Tastes almost exactly like 7-Up. You also get Mountain Dew. Oh yeah. A personal favorite, Mountain Dew Sweet Lightning. I think you only get it at KFC. It's like peach Mountain Dew. I know, it's that good for me, man. It's so good. This is supposed to be a lemonade, but it's in fact more Sweet Lightning. Not complaining, but you also get the Colonel's Lemonade. And last but not least, Sweet Tea. Oh yeah. My sweet tea at KFC is good. Love all these beverages. These are all of our exclusive drinks. Let's begin over here with the most Chinese of them all. Soy milk. We have Budweiser. The nine fruits orange juice. Then you've got your milk tea with a very cute Colonel Sanders and a bubble tea, which is just as cute and has the little tapioca pearls at the bottom too. Over here, the three lemon tea, consisting of lemon, lime, and orange. It basically just lemon juice. Yeah, I can see why it's called three lemon. <laughs> the heartwarming three black goji oat drink. Oh, if you see the, if you can see the little bits of red stuff floating in there, it's got actual goji berries. It makes me feel like a middle-aged Chinese auntie with curlers in my hair, but in the best way possible. I feel, I don't know. I feel like I'm wearing PJs. I think was the snow top coffee, which is basically an ice latte with a dollop of ice cream. And this also would have looked different when it first arrived. This is called the cute bubble milk. Basically it's just straight up milk with a layer of milk foam and it would have had a smiley face dusted in cocoa powder. Oh, and I forgot to mention, there's also a hot lemon drink that we weren't able to get. These are the K-Coffees. K-Coffees come in hot or cold varieties. You can get Americano, your standard latte, your oat milk latte, your rich milk latte, your coconut latte, 
Then you can also get the vanilla latte, a hazelnut latte, sea salt and macadamia nut latte. And there's also your regular cappuccino and caramel macchiatos. Let's talk cultural perceptions. In terms of prestige, KFC really is the OG. They opened in 1987 before Mackey D's. And back then they would have also been seen as sort of a window to the West, this fancy cosmopolitan place to be seen. But over time, they've really become quite entrenched here in China. And they're now seen as a foreign fast food brand that I would say has a lot of Chinese characteristics. For example, the congee, the breakfast menu, etc. KFC's rep in this country, they're number one. They're number one with fast food, chicken. We got Popeyes. We got, I guess you want to put Chick-fil-A, but that's more sandwiches. As far as like fast chicken and the bone places, Wingstop is Wings and Popeyes and KFC. Reputation is pretty much like you're going to get a decent uh, piece of chicken and a lot of sides. In terms of convenience, KFC has its own delivery service, but it also uses third party suppliers like everybody else. Um, but unlike in the US where KFC is very much takeout focused, here in China, they're more about the dine-in experience, especially with the extended family. KFC is incredibly convenient, reliable. Um, I wouldn't hang out at one or dine there. I would take it to go. One thing I should say about KFC, as much as they work on having quality control, you could tell if a KFC is good or bad by like how dark the chicken is when it comes out. Like the, you know, I, the one that we did today, I don't think they changed the oil <laughs> in, in a while. The, the chicken was looking a little darker than it should. So that's kind of like a thing you gotta consider. Convenience, usually the service is pretty quick, but uh, it's April 27th. So if somebody watching this happened to get KFC from Uber or DoorDash, on April 27th, around 11.30, and your meal took longer than you wanted. My fault, uh, our big order pretty much backed everything up anyway. So it's usually convenient when you don't live in a neighborhood where they shoot a food wars. So in terms of adaptability, KFC, as we mentioned before, was the first to offer congee and uh, Chinese krilla, soy milk on their breakfast menus. Also, unlike McDonald's, which kind of played up its foreignness a little bit, KFC, when they came to the China market, had high-level managers who actually spoke the language, and so they adapted very quickly. For example, there are lots of regional differences in terms of how much spicy people can eat. Like people over in Shanghai were complaining that the spicy chicken was too spicy, but people over in Hunan in central China were complaining that it wasn't spicy enough. So they were very quick to react. And in KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Kentucky, Kentucky's in the United States, so pretty much is local country tastes. Um, yeah, they, they do the Nashville hot thing. They occasionally bring sauces in and out, but... Rivals, KFC basically has none. I mean, it's, it's numero uno, over 9,000 stores, double the market share of McDonald's. Way, way, way far ahead in the distance. Unless they sit on their laurels, they're probably gonna be cruising at number one for a while. KFC versus Popeyes, I would say KFC has, in America, at least four times as many locations. Yeah, I think, I think Popeyes tastes better, but, you know, then, I mean, as far as business is concerned, KFC is not sweating it. In China, this spicy chicken burger is 19.5 yuan or 2.83 US dollars. A U.S. spicy chicken sandwich is $6.99 or 48.10 UN. That is a 147% price increase. Make it a meal, add a medium fries and a medium Pepsi, and the cost goes up to 42 UN or $6.10, still less than the cost of a sandwich in the U.S. Our U.S. combo with tax is $13.75 or 94 61 UN. That is a 125.4% increase compared to China. Our most expensive single menu item is the fried chicken bucket and Budweiser meal, which is 146 UN or $21, and it gets you eight spicy wings, eight New Orleans wings, and four Budweiser's. I mean, I. I don't know where the other three went, honestly. They must have just gotten lost on the road or something. In the US, we have two menu items costing $49.99 or 343.97 UN. 
That's either the 16-piece chicken meal or the 16-piece tenders meal. Both come with four large sides and eight biscuits. Unfortunately, KFC doesn't share its nutrition data with the public. But what we do know is that in 2020, Yum China, which owns KFC and Pizza Hut here in China, partnered with the Chinese Nutrition Society to research and apply best nutritional practices for the brand. KFC in the US does have nutrition info available. Here are a few stats. All right, if you get the Kentucky Grilled Chicken Drumstick, it's 80 calories. Crisp it up a little bit with the original recipe or the spicy, now it's 130 calories. Want to make it extra crispy? Like this one in my stomach? Now you've increased the calories to 170. That's 112.5% more calories than the Kentucky Grilled. Get real though, it's Kentucky Fried Chicken. If you want grilled chicken, go dust off your George Foreman. Speaking of calories, what menu items have the most? If you're going with a chicken, the extra crispy, a breast is 530 calories. Sandwich, the recently discontinued Double Down, has 950 calories. For reference, a Big Mac has 550. And for sides, the fries are the top of the list. An individual has 320 calories, and then the family size, which let's be honest, is for one person, uh, has 840 calories. I have been informed that my fellow producer, Yuli Song, said that their favorite thing on the KFC menu is in fact the pot pie. Wouldn't nice if you said something while I was going off about it. Oh God, there's peas in it. What else is, what else is in here? What is this? It kind of tastes like chicken noodle soup. This, it, this is just okay. Who is getting this over fried chicken? Are you just booing me, Yuli? Ah. Oh. I'm not being a hater. I, hey, people tune into this show because they know Joe keeps it real.